let's get right into it. You've been lied to about your own brain, your memories, even your love life. Today, we're counting down 10 psychology myths you still believe and why they're wrong. Each myth we bust will leave you more shocked than the last. There's a lot they don't want you to know about how your mind really works. Number 10. Opposites attract. Except they don't. Picture a shy bookworm falling in love with a wild biker in a Hollywood rom-com. They say opposites attract, right? In reality, if you're hoping for lifelong harmony, you might want to find someone who shares your taste for quiet weekends and true crime podcasts. Research shows that similarity, not difference, is a stronger predictor of attraction and long-term success in relationships. In fact, one study found over 75% of college students believe the opposite to tract tale, even though almost no evidence supports it. Sure, two very different people might feel a spark at first, novelty is exciting, but over time those cute differences can become downright irritating. Think about it, would a hardcore homebody really live happily ever after with a party all night extrovert? Unlikely. Psychologists even dub the opposites attract idea a toxic belief when it comes to marriage. Sounds more like a recipe for a reality TV drama than true love. So the next time someone insists you need your polar opposite to complete you, just remember that having a clone might actually be less crazy. After all, bonding over your mutual obsession with pineapple pizza beats arguing over anything and everything. Speaking of things that don't mix, Let's move on to a myth that involves deception and a machine that's been deceiving us. Number 9. Lie detectors never lie. Imagine you're hooked up to a polygraph machine, sweating like you just ran a marathon. The examiner nods knowingly as the needles jump. The machine has spoken. But can we really trust a device straight out of a spy movie to tell truth from fibs? Polygraph lie detector tests measure things like heart rate and perspiration, not actual lies, and they're notoriously unreliable. Some studies find error rates as high as 40%, meaning the gadget is about as good at accusing innocent people as it is at catching liars. Oops. That's why you can't usually use these tests in court, unless your judge is Judge Judy. Even the name lie detector is misleading. One expert quipped it should be called an arousal detector because all it knows is that you're nervous about something. Of course you're nervous. You're strapped to a chair with wires like it's Frankenstein's lab. People love the idea of a quick-fix truth machine, but no such infallible test exists. Sorry, CSI. So the next time you see a detective on TV dramatically yell, the test says you're lying, take it with a huge grain of salt. We're not human lie detectors either, but up next, we'll bust the myth about that squishy thing in your skull. Get ready to unlock a higher brain power. Or not. Number 8. 90% of your brain wasted. Have you ever daydreamed about unlocking some secret mental superpower, like telepathy, if only you could tap into that unused 90% of your brain? Hate to break it to you, but you're already using all of it. The idea that we use only 10% of our brains is pure science fiction, kept alive by Hollywood movies like Lucy and Limitless. In reality, brain scans show that all areas of a healthy brain are active pretty much all the time, even when you're asleep or in a coma. Depending on what task you're doing, some areas work harder than others, but the idle 90% simply doesn't exist. Further evidence from neuropsychology shows there's no part of the brain you can damage without losing some ability, which tells us every bit of brain matter has a purpose. So why do people still want to believe this myth? Well, it's a tempting thought. Who wouldn't want to discover an inner X-man ability by gulping a magic pill? But sorry, no Professor X powers for us. On the bright side, you can't blame your problems on a lazy brain. That thing in your skull is working overtime, 24-7. Now that we've busted the 10% myth, let's address another piece of brain baloney. The idea that you're either a left brain math ways or a right brain creative butterfly. Spoiler, you need your whole brain for this next one. Number seven, left brain versus right brain. Are you an artsy dreamer or a logic machine? Pop culture loves to shove us into two boxes, the creative right brain people versus the analytical left brain people. 
you've probably seen those online quizzes. Find out if you're left-brained or right-brained. As if we don't all use, you know, our whole brain. The myth says one hemisphere of your brain is dominant and dictates your personality and skills. In truth, your brain's two halves are in constant cahoots. Both sides work together for almost everything you do. The differences between them are far more subtle than this myth makes it seem. No one is a pure left or right brain thinker. In fact, brain imaging shows we use both hemispheres for most cognitive tasks, and the brain works as a whole with constant communication between the two sides. A left-right division is just too blunt to capture how our noodle really operates. So next time a personality test tells you you're right-brained because you enjoy music, remember that your left brain probably helped you count the beat. The only thing a left-right brain quiz truly reveals is which fun stereotype you prefer. Now that we know your entire brain is always on duty, it's time to talk about what it's doing with your experiences, specifically how it remembers them. If you think your memories play back like a perfect video, well, let's just say our next myth will be quite memorable. Number six, your memory is a liar. Quick question, what color was the shirt you wore last Tuesday? If you answered in two seconds with absolute certainty, sorry, but I still wouldn't bet my life on it. Our memories like to pretend they're flawless video recordings, yet in reality, your brain is less a camcorder and more a sketch artist with an attitude. Ever recall a childhood story one way while your sibling insists it happened completely differently? That's because memory is reconstructive, not a perfect playback. Each time you remember something, your brain kind of rebuilds the scene, filling in gaps with whatever seems plausible or pleasing at the moment. In other words, your memory is a bit of a fibber and it really likes to embellish the truth. Over time, memories can change or even merge with others. And don't get me started on eyewitnesses in court. They might sound convincing, but false memories are easier to plant than dandelions on an unkempt lawn. So the next time you're utterly sure you didn't leave the stove on, maybe double check it anyway. Your brain could be gaslighting you just a little. If our own minds can play tricks on us, what about tricks played on our minds? Let's talk about those sneaky subliminal messages you've heard about. Are advertisers really playing Jedi mind tricks on you? Number five, subliminal ads brainwash you. Beware of the evil subliminal message. You're innocently watching a movie, but somewhere hidden in the frames, a mysterious command flashes. Eat more popcorn. Suddenly you feel a craving for salty, buttery goodness. Sounds like a sci-fi horror flick, right? That's basically the story a marketing guy named James Vickery sold to the world in 1957. He claimed a quick flash of drink Coke in a film boosted sales like crazy. Spoiler alert, Vickery later admitted he made it all up. Subsequent experiments tried the same trick and nothing extraordinary happened. Turns out, subliminal messages are more like a gentle poke than a puppet master strings. Yes, subliminal cues might momentarily influence your thoughts, but they won't force you to do anything crazy. In fact, the only thing truly mind-controlling about ads is how overtly loud and repetitive they are. If subliminal brainwashing really worked, advertisers wouldn't bother with catchy jingles. they just flash, buy now, and turn us into instant shopaholics. So relax, that weird urge to buy a new blender is probably just you, not a secret government mind beam. Speaking of mind control, let's move on to a classic myth involving swinging pendulums and clucking like a chicken. You're feeling very skeptical, and you should be. Number four, hypnosis hijacks your mind. You are getting very sleepy. We've all seen the hypnotist trope, the swain pocket watch, the volunteer clucking like a chicken on stage utterly under the hypnotist's power. It looks like mind control magic, or at least some kind of psychological Jedi trick. But real hypnosis isn't a villain's brainwashing device. You cannot be hypnotized into doing something against your morals or will. What hypnosis can do is put you in a relaxed, highly focused state where you're more open to suggestions. Kind of like being so absorbed in a movie that you tune out the outside world. If a hypnotist told you to do something truly objectionable, you'd likely snap right out of the trance or just refuse internally. And about those stories of hypnosis unlocking repressed memories, 
hypnotically recovered memories are usually an unreliable mix of fact and fantasy. It's all too easy to implant false memories that way. So no, you're not going to reveal your computer passwords under hypnosis, unless you wanted to already. The power of hypnosis is more help you relax and maybe quit smoking, not turn you into a mind-controlled zombie. Now that we've dispelled the spooky mind control myth, let's tackle a more everyday myth about how you learn. Do you really need to find your learning style to learn better? Classes in session for our next myth. Number three, learning styles are real? Maybe you've even said, I just can't learn this unless I see it drawn out. I must be a visual learner. The notion that each person has one best way to learn and that teachers must cater to it is everywhere. It sounds empowering, but research shows this is one lesson that flunked the science test. There's no solid evidence that matching instruction to a supposed learning style improves learning. If anything, obsessing over a single style can backfire because you might ignore other ways of learning that actually work better. In reality, the best approach is to use multiple methods. Hear it, see it, write it, practice it, whatever it takes. Our brains are pretty adaptable. They'll grab knowledge any way they can get it. The myth persists because it's true that people have preferences. Sure, you might prefer watching a video over reading a textbook, but preference isn't the same as performance. Even if you like one method, mixing in other formats often helps you understand and remember things more fully. So the next time someone says, I can't learn from lectures because I'm a visual learner, hand them a pen and paper. A little writing might actually do them some good. Now, speaking of overblown differences, let's address one of the biggest myths pitting Mars versus Venus. Are men's and women's minds really worlds apart? Buckle up for our next item. It might surprise you. Number two, men versus women brains. Time to settle the battle of the sexes, at least in the brain department. You've heard the cliches, men are logical, women are emotional, or women can't read maps and men can't listen. According to pop psychology, you'd think male and female brains were as different as Mars and Venus. But surprise, psychologically, men and women are a lot more alike than different. Sure, there are some brain and hormonal differences, those X and Y chromosomes aren't completely pointless, but when it comes to thinking, personality, memory, intelligence, you name it, research finds far more overlap than gap. Most abilities and traits show significant overlap between genders, and individual differences outweigh gender-based differences by a mile. Evolution didn't create two separate human brains, just one versatile brain influenced by many factors. Yes, including sex, but also culture, upbringing, and individual personality. So next time someone says, ugh, you'll never understand because you're a man or woman, remind them that our brains have way more in common than not. We're all earthlings. Thank you very much. If you thought that one was contentious, just wait for our final myth. It's the juiciest and maybe most cringeworthy of all. Number one, sex addiction is fake. Every time a celebrity is caught cheating, they suddenly check into rehab for sex addiction. Convenient, huh? It's like the ultimate get-out-of-jail-free card for philanderers. I couldn't help it. I'm sick. Now, there's no doubt some people have truly problematic sexual behavior, but the idea that hordes of folks are clinically addicted to sex the way others are to heroin? Mostly myth. In fact, sex addiction isn't even an official diagnosis. It doesn't appear in the DSM-5, and even the World Health Organization avoids using the addiction label. The science isn't clear that compulsive sexual behavior works the same way in the brain as substance addictions. A lot of people tossing around the term sex addict are basically using it as a fancy excuse. Experts warn that slapping the sex addiction label on someone, especially after they get caught cheating, just turns bad behavior into a supposed illness. Frankly, if Bob cheated on his wife with half the city, it's more likely because Bob has lousy self-control or a shaky moral compass, not because an irresistible medical urge made him do it. Now, this doesn't mean nobody ever struggles with hypersexual behavior. 
a small percentage of people really do have trouble controlling their sexual impulses and they deserve help and empathy. But calling it addiction might do more harm than good. So next time you hear someone blame cheating on sex addiction, roll your eyes accordingly. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see